Do you want a mod that will add a dimension that has its own content? Or maybe you want a mod that is similar to the Between Lands, but is more updated? The Underguard mod for 1.16.5 Forge will surely meet your blocky needs. This Jack of All Trades mod adds in a dimension that has biomes, mobs, one structure, vegetation, foods, building blocks, crafting materials, ore slash ingots, tools, armor, music discs, potion effects, and new advancements. Did I mention this mod is massive? Because yeah, it is. Let's go in order and cover everything this mod adds in. To access this dimension, you'll need to make the portal. The portal can be constructed with any type of stone brick, including the ones the mod adds in. The construction of the portal is similar to the nether portal. You can have a basic one like this, or have one of this shape and size. Instead of flint and steel, you need to make something called a catalyst to activate this portal. Also, keep in mind that you must use the same type of brick for the portal to work. Do note that some shaders will make the undergarden look like there is a sky. This is impossible since we are technically below the overworld. With that being said, there are nine biomes in the undergarden. The biomes spawn vertically, meaning biomes have layers going up and down similar to the nether. The biomes have ambience. I'll give you a few seconds to listen after I give a quick description of them. The barren abyss biome is a deserted and dangerous area. It's void of nature and there are enemies swarming here. The ambience reflects the abysmal visuals. The dense forest biome has vegetation and passive mobs. There are less hostile mobs here and plenty of wood to collect. The Forgotten Fields biome is your go-to biome for passive mobs and important vegetation. It is also one of the safest biomes in this mod. The Frostfields biome is a snowy and desolate biome. There are almost no passive mobs, aggressive mobs, and vegetation. The Grongle Growth biome is similar to the other forest biomes, except for the fact that this is the only place to find the Grongle trees. The Mushroom Bog biome is one of the most dangerous biomes. It's filled with a poisonous liquid called Viriliant, and it has a ton of aggressive mobs. The Smog Spires biome is another dangerous biome. It is home to smog vents and prickly blisterberry bushes. The Smog Stem Forest biome has one tree type, and that is the Smog Stem tree. You can find aggressive mobs, passive mobs, and vegetation here. The Wigglewood Forest Biome is very similar to the Smog Stem Biome. You will find the same things except the tree type is Wigglewood. Next up we have the mobs. There are a total of 17 mobs. Let's take a look at the passive ones first. Do note that the passive mobs spawn more frequently at higher Y levels. The Dweller mob spawns in these biomes. The Dweller has 15 health points. The biomes that have wiki next to them means that the Undergarden wiki says they spawn here, but from my own research, I find that to not be true. The wiki is outdated, so it may or may not be accurate. It will follow a player that is holding underbeans. They can be bred with them. They will run away from nearby rot spawn, which are the enemies of this dimension, and it will run away from an entity if attacked. The Dweller will drop 0 to 2 leather and 1 to 3 raw Dweller meat. These drops are affected by looting. They can also be ridden. More on that later. The Gwibbling mob spawns in the large bodies of water at the bottom of the Undergarden, at roughly Y level 32. It has 3 health points. The Gwibbling can be right-clicked with a bucket and transported elsewhere. It drops one raw Gwibbling and has a 5% chance of dropping one bone meal. These drops are affected by looting. The Skintling mob spawns in these biomes. It has two health points. This mob also runs away from rot spawn. It spawns goo as it moves. All entities are severely slowed by this goo, and its jumping is impossible. The Skintling drops one to two Skintling goo balls. This is affected by looting. The Gloomper mob spawns in these biomes. It has 20 health points. The Gloomper will follow a player holding a Gloom Gourd. They can be bred with it. It will run away from Rot spawn and run away when attacked by an entity. The Gloomper has a chance to create a poisonous cloud when attacked for defense. 
It drops 0 to 2 leather and 1 to 2 gloomper legs. These drops are affected by looting. The Mog mob spawns in these biomes. It has 20 health points. The Mog will follow a player holding a depth rock pebble. They can be bred with it. Rot spawn do not attack it, for it looks like a big rock to them. It can be sheared to obtain 1 to 2 Mog moss. The Mog drops 0 to 1 Mog Moss and 3 to 6 Depth Rock Pebbles. These drops are affected by looting. But that doesn't really matter because who in the world could kill these adorable little things? What do you mean I just killed one? Your eyes are deceiving you. Now we have the aggressive mobs. There are two different groups of aggressive mobs. The Rot Spawn and the Cave Spawn. Let's look at the Rot Spawn first. There are three rot spawn mobs. They spawn in all the biomes, but most notably in the barren abyss. They will only spawn in a light level below 7. All three rot spawn act the same way. They are aggressive towards the player, passive mobs, and neutral mobs. There is a material called Eutherium. You can obtain it from mining or from killing rot spawn. Eutherium can be made into weapons that deal bonus damage to these mobs. We'll cover Eutherium and the other materials later. You can craft a torch shard with Eutherium. If placed within 5 blocks of rot spawn, they will take 4 health points of continuous damage. The weakest rot spawn is the Rotling. It has 10 health points. It drops 0 to 2 Eutheric shards. This drop is affected by looting. The second strongest rot spawn is the Rot Walker. It has 40 health points and 3 armor points. It drops 1 to 4 Eutheric shards. This is also affected by looting. The strongest rot spawn is the Rot Beast. It has 80 health points and 3 armor points. It drops 2 to 8 etheric shards. This is affected by looting too. There are 3 cave spawn mobs. They only spawn in caves. Caves only generate at the bottom of the undergarden. These mobs will only spawn in a light level below 7. The Nargoyle mob has 40 health points. It attacks by doing small leaps at a nearby player. It currently drops nothing. The Muncher mob has 15 health points. It eats stone blocks it runs into. It will heal 1 health point per block eaten if it's missing health. If the Muncher detects a nearby player, it will eat its way towards them if there are stone blocks in the way. It drops 0 to 9 Clogram Nuggets and 0 to 3 Frost Steel Nuggets. These drops are not affected by looting. The Splugy Mob has 20 health points. It will maintain a certain distance from the player and shoot depth rock pebbles at them. It will run away when damaged. The Splugy drops 3 to 6 depth rock pebbles. This drop is affected by looting. The last aggressive mob is the Gwib. This creature spawns in large bodies of water at the bottom of the undergarden, similar to the Gwibling. It has 20 health points and 5 armor points. It swims slowly, attacks the player and Gwiblings. The Gwib currently drops nothing. Now we're moving on to the neutral mobs. These are mobs that are passive-aggressive, which means they will not attack until provoked. The Brute mob spawns in these biomes. It has 20 health points. If something attacks this mob, it will attack back. The Brute drops 0 to 2 Brute Tusks. This drop is affected by looting. The Stoneborn mob spawns in these biomes. It has 50 health points and 10 armor points. You can trade with this mob like a villager. Stoneborn will usually have four available trades. These trades can range from music discs, overworld ores, buying or selling regalium, and more. Regalium is the main currency, similar to how emeralds are the main currency to villagers. Also, the most notable trait is the Clogram Battle Axe. This is the only way to get this item. If provoked by an entity, it will attack, and it will also call in other nearby Stoneborn for help. Don't take this mob out of the undergarden. It will explode in 15 seconds if you do. The Stoneborn drops 3 to 6 Depth Rock Pebbles. This is affected by looting. Moving on to the section of mobs you all have been waiting for, the bosses. There is one mini boss and one boss that isn't implemented yet. The Forgotten Guardian is the mini-boss. You can only find it in the catacomb structure. It has 80 health points and 10 armor points. 
it will remain idle until a player comes into range. The Forgotten Guardian drops 4 to 16 Forgotten Nuggets. This drop is not affected by looting. The Masticator is the boss. It currently spawns nowhere. It has yet to be implemented. The boss has 150 health points and 10 armor points. It attacks everything, even its own kind. It heals for a portion of its health after killing something. The Masticator drops 4 to 8 Masticator scales. This drop is not affected by looting. To wrap up the mob section, let's cover the mob that is your ally, the Forgotten Minion. It has 20 health points and 10 armor points. The minion is built by using a block of forgotten metal and a carved gloom gourd. It shoots forgotten nuggets at all aggressive mobs. Giving it a forgotten nugget will heal it by 5 health points. The forgotten minion drops nothing. There is one structure this mod has, and that is the Catacombs. It only spawns in Forgotten Fields and Frost Fields. It can be found by using the slash locate command. The entrance juts out of the ground. The rest of the dungeon can be seen from the surface at times. The layout is a one-floor maze of corridors leading you from one room to the next. There are a crap load of spawners spawning the weaker rot spawn. The cave spawn mobs can spawn naturally in this structure. There are plenty of chests to scavenge. They will yield under garden themed loot. You can find a variety of vegetation from all the biomes in some nooks and crannies. Speaking of nooks and crannies, there are tiny indents where the forgotten guardian spawns. Lastly, you can find hidden chests within the coarse deep soil that looks like this. There are 10 main plants slash fungi you will find while exploring the biomes. Some are used for food, while others are used for crafting recipes. The glitter kelp vine only spawns at the bottom of the undergarden, within the large bodies of water. It grows vertically and it's affected by bone meal. Collect the plant by punching it. It drops glitter kelp. The amount depends on the length of the vine. You can cook the glitter kelp into dried kelp for fast and easy food. The underbean plant spawns in these biomes. It can be placed directly on dirt, it grows similar to Minecraft sweet berries, and it's affected by bone meal. Collect the plant by right-clicking it. You can get two to three underbeans. The blister berry plant spawns only in the smog spires biome. It can be placed directly on dirt, grows and damages similar to sweet berries. It is also affected by bone meal. Collect it by right-clicking it. You can expect to get 1 to 2 rotten blister berries and 2 to 3 blister berries. The troop fruit vine spawns in all biomes, except for the barren abyss, frost fields, and smog spires. It only grows vertically and downwards. It's affected by bone meal. Collect the plant by punching it. The amount it will drop depends on the length. The gloom gourd spawns in these biomes. You can craft four gloom gourd seeds from it. The seeds must be placed on tilled land. It grows similarly to pumpkins. It's affected by bone meal. Collecting it is also similar to a pumpkin. The ditch bulb flower spawns in all biomes, most notably the barren abyss since it only spawns on stone blocks. It's affected by bone meal. Collect the plant by right clicking it. It will drop one ditch bulb. There are four mushrooms. They spawn in all the biomes, most notably in the mushroom bog biome. They are all affected by bone meal, they can be placed on dirt or stone blocks, and you can punch them to collect them. This is the indigo mushroom, it can be transformed into blue dye. This is the ink mushroom, it can be transformed into black dye. This is the blood mushroom, it can be transformed into red dye. The blood mushroom globule that comes from the big mushroom gives you 9 red dye instead. This is the veiled mushroom, it can be transformed into white dye. There is technically an 11th plant, but it's practically useless, so I didn't include it with the others. The Shimmer Weed spawns in all biomes except for the Barren Abyss, Mushroom Bog, and Smog Spires. The smaller Shimmer Weed produces light. The taller Shimmer Weed produces more light. That's it. There are no other uses. Are you hungry? If so, you're in luck. There are 15 foods. Some come from mobs while others come from the plants previously mentioned. The underbeans come from the underbean plant. They give one and a half hunger bars. The roasted underbeans are the cooked version of the underbeans. 
they give three hunger bars. Raw dweller meat comes from killing dwellers. It gives one and a half hunger bars. The dweller steak is the cooked version of the raw dweller meat. It gives four hunger bars. Raw gibbling comes from killing a gibbling. It gives one hunger bar. The cooked gibbling gives two and a half hunger bars. The raw gloomper leg comes from killing gloompers. The leg gives one hunger bar. The cooked version, gloomper leg, gives three hunger bars and 30 seconds of jump boost one. Droop fruit comes from the droop fruit vines. It gives half a hunger bar, gives 30 seconds of glowing, and can be used to make the potion of glowing. Blister berries come from the blister berry bushes. They give three hunger bars. The gloom gourd pie is made with any type of mushroom, one gloom gourd, and one glitter kelp. It restores four hunger bars and gives 30 seconds of brilliant resistance. Indigo stew is made with one bowl and three indigo mushrooms. It gives two hunger bars and 30 seconds of night vision in slowness one. Veiled stew is made with one bowl and three veiled mushrooms. It gives two hunger bars and 30 seconds of featherweight in slow falling one. Bloody stew is made with, you guessed it, one bowl and three bloody mushrooms. It gives two hunger bars and gives 30 seconds of strength and brutalness one. Inky stew is made with one bowl and three inky mushrooms. It gives two hunger bars and 30 seconds of blindness and resistance one. For the building slash decoration blocks, we have quite a few things. There are six sets of building blocks and some extras. There are three sets of wood blocks, smog stem, wiggle wood, and grongle. Each wood comes from its respective tree, and the set has many different types of blocks. Stairs, buttons, doors, etc. There are also boats. There are three sets of stone blocks, depth rock, shiver stone, and tremble crust. All three stone types are found everywhere, but shiver stone is mostly found in the frost fields biome. Each set has different types of blocks. Bricks, stairs, walls, slabs, etc. For the extras, we have depth rock pebbles. They are the tiny pebble piles you will find practically everywhere on the ground. Punch them to pick them up, or you can use a slick touch pickaxe to preserve its original form. There's a small variety of dirt blocks that can be found in different biomes. There's also a block called sediment you can find in caves. You can smelt it into glass blocks. There is the depth rock bed and mog moss rug. These items are made from mog moss. The bed will set your spawn point in the undergarden. So if you die in another dimension, you will still spawn in the undergarden. The bed will explode if used outside of the undergarden. Finally, you can create three different blocks from the gloom gourd. The carved gloom gourd can be worn on your head or used to create the forgotten minion. The gloomo lantern is made with a carved gloom gourd and a regular torch. It's great for decoration and light. The shard or lantern is made with a carved gloom gourd and a shard torch. It provides little light. However, it damages rot spawn just like the shard torch. Up next, we have the stray materials and items. There are roughly 11 of them. Mog moss is sheared off of mogs and is used to create the depth rock bed and mog moss rugs, as said before. Root tusks currently only make four bone meal. Ditch Ball makes two torches, campfires, and smelts up to four items. Skintling Goo Ball can be thrown like a snowball, slowing whatever was hit for a few seconds. It makes two leads in a Skintling Goo Block. The Goo Block has small sliding properties on top, and the sides make it very difficult to move and impossible to jump. You can stick yourself to it like this, if you're weird like that. The twisty twig is the underguard version of the vanilla stick. It can craft everything a stick can, plus a few extra items. The slingshot is made from sticks and twisty twigs. It's a cheap, long-range weapon that does 6 health points to mobs. Use depth rock pebbles as ammo. Masticator scales, as said before, come from the work-in-progress boss. Their only use is to make the masticated chest plate. The chest plate gives 3 armor bars and has thorns 5. The Brilliant Mix Bucket comes from right-clicking Brilliant with an empty bucket. This means you can transport this deadly stuff to anywhere. Underbean on a stick is made with a stick and an underbean. It is used to control dwellers. Make sure to put a saddle on it first. The rotten blister berries you get from the bushes can be thrown at mobs, dealing up to 10 damage. Combine six of them with a twisty twig to create a blister bomb. This bomb will break terrain and deal more damage. For the next section, we have eight ores with three new armor sets and four new tool sets. Most of the armor and tools are crafted just like the vanilla armor and tools. There are four overworld ores that spawn in the undergarden. Coal, iron, gold, and diamond. Coal ore spawns almost everywhere. 
where iron ore spawns less frequently as you descend. Gold and diamond ore only spawn near the top of the undergarden. You can see them on the ceiling usually. First up we have the frost steel. Frost steel ore only spawns in the frost fields biome. It spawns at the surface and deeper. It's fairly common. Smelt the ore and get the frost steel ingot. The ingot is used to craft the block of frost steel, frost steel armor, and tools. The armor is the weakest set of armor in the mod. The full set gives 7 armor bars. Each piece lowers your movement speed by 5%. The durability is fair. The tools are the weakest set of tools in the mod. All tools slow mobs that are hit. The damage and speed are similar to diamond. The durability is also fair. <laughs> Next we have Clogram. Clogram ore spawns everywhere, near the surface and deep as well. It's very common. Smelt the ore and get the Clogram ingot. The ingot is used to craft the block of Clogram. A small selection of blocks, Clogram armor, and tools. The armor is the second strongest. It gives 9 armor bars and the boots allow you to ignore the skintly goo slow. The Clogram shield works the same way as the vanilla shield, but it has twice the durability. Speaking of durability, the Clogram set has terrible durability. The tools are the third strongest set. They are similar to netherite in damage, but speeds are similar to diamond. The Clogram Battle Axe has 10 attack damage, 0.6 attack speed, and knockback 4. As said before, it cannot be crafted. You must get it through Stoneborn Trades. <laughs> Let's move on to Ethereum. Ethereum ore spawns fairly often and is very deep within the ground. Smelt the ore and get a Ethereum nugget. You can also get this nugget by combining 4 Etheric shards that drop from Rot Spawn. Fill a crafting table with 9 nuggets to make a Ethereum ingot. The ingot makes a block of Ethereum, armor, and tools. The armor is the strongest in the mod. It gives 10 armor bars and the durability is good. The tools are the second best in the mod. They are similar to diamond in damage and netherite in speeds. The tools are technically weaker than Clogram, but the durability is 5 times higher. The sword and axe deal 1.5 times damage to Rot Spawn. Before we get to the last and best set of tools, here is Regalium. Regalium spawns very rarely and deep within the ground. Smelt the ore to get Regalium ingots. The ingot does not make armor or tools, but can be used to make a block of Regalium. Regalium is the main currency for Stoneborn trades. Lastly, we have the Forgotten Metal. The ingot is made from 9 nuggets, and the only way to get the nuggets is by defeating the Forgotten Guardian. The ingot is used to create the block of Forgotten Metal and used to upgrade the Clogram tools. This process is very similar to upgrading diamond to netherite. The Forgotten tools are the strongest in the mod and each tool has its own effect. The tools are faster and deal more damage than netherite. The Forgotten Sword deals 10 attack damage and does 2 times damage to non-boss underguard mobs. The Forgotten Pickaxe mines undergarden blocks 1.5 times faster. The Forgotten Shovel mines undergarden blocks 1.5 times faster. The Forgotten Axe also mines undergarden blocks 1.5 times faster and deals 2 times damage to non-boss undergarden mobs. The Forgotten Hoe for some reason mines undergarden blocks 1.5 times faster. These tools have great durability. The Forgotten Battle Axe deals 10 attack damage, has knockback 4, and does 2 times damage to non-boss undergarden mobs. The durability on this item is exceptional. I would like to mention there are over 10 plus music tracks and 4 collectible music discs. These music discs can be bought from Stoneborn. When you play this mod, make sure to give them a listen. There are 4 new potion effects. The Brittleness effect can be attained by crafting Brittleness potions from combining a Blood Mushroom Globule with Awkward Potions. This effect makes the player take more damage with how much armor they have. For example, you can get one shot from a single skeleton arrow while wearing full diamond armor. Featherweight effect can be obtained by crafting Featherweight potions from combining a Veiled Mushroom with Awkward Potions. This effect increases the distance you're knocked back. Use this command in your world to turn yourself into a human ping pong. Brilliant Resistance is the next effect. You can create its potions by combining a Gloom Gourd with Awkward Potions. This effect simply makes you immune to the poison from the Brilliant Liquid. 
The gooey effect is the last effect. You can't craft a potion for it in survival. This effect is applied to a mob that is hit with a skintling goo ball. You will be slowed and leave a gooey trail just like a skintling. We are finally at the last section of this mod, the advancements. There are over 20 advancements for you to obtain while playing through this mod. These advancements range from adventure, fighting, loot collecting, and more. Some of them are hidden, so good luck finding them all. And there you have it. That is pretty much everything the Undergarden has to offer at the moment. I would like to thank the mod developers for helping me with some of the information in this video. They have been very kind to me. They have a Discord server and a wiki page for the mod. Make sure to go check those out. If you have any questions, please do leave me a comment in the comment section. I'll make sure to get back with you ASAP. Thank you for watching, drop a like on the video, and make sure to subscribe for more mod-related content in the future. And as always, Kermlets, stay snazzy.